Greetings and welcome to Saturday Morning Marketing Smarties. Whether it's morning or not, it doesn't matter. Uh, we're going to have fun anyway. And, uh, you know, it's morning here where we are, where, where uh, Karen and I are, actually. And uh, probably it's not morning anywhere else because west of us, everybody's in the ocean in a boat watching this show or maybe in Hawaii. <laughs> oh, I don't know if they can watch in Hawaii even. But um, uh, that, that's about as far as morning goes for this show. But uh, everyone else is either in the afternoon or possibly evening, or either that or you're asleep and couldn't care less to watch this show. But anyway, we're just welcoming everybody. Up. We're glad to have you. A lot of people in the audience, so we'll go over that in a second. But before I go on, I want to introduce who else is in the green room with me today. And just under the wire as we were to start the show is Molly Youngblood Geiger. Molly, say hi and tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Molly, and I am located in Jacksonville, Florida. The name of my agency is Design Right For You. Um, I participate with Google on several different platforms. I'm a Google Top contributor. I'm also a Google Rising Star, um, Google Trusted Verifier, Google Small Business Advisor, uh, Beta Tester. There's a whole bunch of things I'm doing with Google. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, well, you live on the computer and with Google, so it's understandable. If you spend that much time you will possibly make some headroom. And uh, <laughs> thank, thank you very much, Molly. Glad to have you back. Um, and we'll talk about your exploits with your hurricane in a moment. That's the first subject of the of the day. But before we go on to that, we want to get around to uh, Karen D. Chin, our San Francisco monitor, mar marketer, who has also been at Google Land and having her own experiences that are very unique. So <laughs> Karen, say hi and tell us a little about yourself. I'm Karen out here in San Francisco, and I am a marketing consultant and a social media engager. And I've actually been to two Google events in the last month. So it's kind of been an interesting experience. Um, one as a local guide, we had our first ever local guide summit. So there were 75 local guides from 37 countries, and we all got together in San Francisco. And we were at a two-day summit for um, learning about local guides, learning from each other, learning from Google, having Google ask for our feedback about the product itself in terms of local guides and how to make it better. And local guides is affiliated with Google Maps. And um, the last event I went to was October the 4th, which was the big um, made by Google hardware launch, which I did not realize what I was getting myself into when I uh, first accepted the invitation. And we're going to get into that more. And then uh, I talked uh, Karen into taking us for a photo tour of her event. So we're going to run through those as quickly as we can and get some inside lines and, and uh, feedback from Karen regarding that particular event, the Google products event. But uh, before we get into any of this, we're going to get around to the hurricane in just a moment. We want to do a, uh, a hurricane close. Uh, hello to Bill Graham from Belize. And uh, Bill not only does Belize, he also does the Smarty Show. And uh, hi, hi, Bill. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Good morning. My name is Bill Graham. Uh, my website is BillDoesBelize.com. And I don't promote Belize as a tourist destination, but I provide unbiased information or what I refer to as the unbelievable truth um, for anybody who might be thinking of a permanent move or retirement here in Belize. And I haven't been to Google, so I'm a little bit out of my, uh, out of my uh, realm here, but I am happy to be here today to help coordinate the comments and uh, ask everybody to uh, please... Uh, Please share your comments, ask your questions of these two ladies, and uh, we'll uh, bring them into the stream uh, as we can. Thank you. And um, we could spend uh, uh, quite a bit of time talking about what Bill does, actually. So you will just have to take it from me that I'm very, very glad and fortunate to have him on the on the team here. And he does. he's figured out some stuff that I, I hadn't even intended that he's able to develop into the comment tracking system and what we're doing. And surely somebody will come up with a better way to do this uh, in sometime in the near future, hopefully. 
and maybe maybe lay waste to a lot of our efforts. But the one thing that is important here is we are grooming Bill to be as much a commentator in this show as anything. But as a representative of the people in the audience, he brings in the the force of the comments that the people are making out in the audience, and he's able to focus and concentrate that on that because. Indeed, I am focusing on what I'm trying to, de 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 uh, to deliver as this show and to coordinate the conversations of the rest of us and Bill, but I sometimes miss what's going on in the audience. So this way, we have Bill, a dedicated representative to represent the people in the common audience. And uh, your voice is important, and I feel that if we emphasize what the people have to offer, and integrate that with the live show, that's going to be the best experience for everybody. So we are saying hi to uh, We Wake. We're saying hi to Barbara Quick. We're saying hi to uh, Julian Dimitrescu. And I hope I'm pronouncing your name right. John Dunn is out there. Richard Clarkson. Is Richard Clarkson out there for the trip? So we've got a few people. And... Uh, Thank you very much for showing up, and I appreciate you commenting. And uh, once again, and lastly, before we continue on, we're, we're experimenting with this system that we're using right now, not for the sake necessarily of using it permanently. We've kind of, we're kind of over the permanent word, right? Because it seems like just as soon as we get used to something, they uh, snatch it from us or it morphs into something re unreasonable. So we're using the best thing that we have right now for comments and for discussion, and we want to have conversations with the people. We also want to deliver the very best information that we have for small businesses and newbies on the internet marketing scene that want to get involved with promoting their business and also engaging in social media and developing video representation because that's the doorway of the future, video and mobile enterprise so those are the things that we cover and focus on in this show and uh now i'm going to take an air breather as i say to, to molly i want to hear about your dang hurricane roland just be just before molly jumps into that i wanted to uh, mention that i am monitoring the comments over on the youtube side and deborah burden has joined us over there and wishes oh, okay. everyone a good afternoon so at this point, I think we'd uh, invite her to uh, click on the unified chat and join us uh, join us in the event if possible, because that way her comments will be saved and we would appreciate that. Very good. And yes, Deborah, come on over, please. Um, surely that if you're watching on YouTube, you're going to hear this statement. So Deborah Burden, Deborah Burden, please come over to unified chat and join the conversation. And uh, that way we'll all be in one place. Oh, Michael Daniels is watching. Wow. Um, glad to have you, Michael. And uh, any any comments that you add to the conversation are appreciated because, of course, you bring a, a vast uh, awareness of Google Land yourself. So we're going to we're going to invite Molly to take the helm now unless we have anything else pressing or if I've forgotten anything. But uh, Molly. I'm really concerned and really interested in your hurricane. But before I turn you loose, hi, William Rock. Hi, William Rock is out there. Nice to have you back. So go ahead, Molly. Tell us about your hurricane experience. Okay, so um, <laughs> the last week has been very interesting. Um, I spent five days without electricity um, due to Hurricane Matthew. Uh, needless to say, that made my job very challenging, uh, being that I'm an internet marketer. But uh, the last few weeks have actually been interesting. So um, I had an opportunity to go out to Google uh, to the top contributor meetup, which was very cool. I actually got to meet in person William Rock and Michael Daniels. Uh, it was very, very fun. Uh, but getting back to the hurricane, um, I'm used to hurricanes. I've been through several of them. But this last one in particular, uh, due to the area where I live, it's uh, heavily uh, woods. You know, there's a lot of woods where I live. So um, kind of nasty in terms of uh, wind speed, rain, a lot of trees down, a lot of power outages. Uh, just, you know, 
the day of the hurricane actually wasn't that bad. Uh, I mean, a lot of wind and rain. We had electricity, though. It wasn't until the next day that we lost power. Uh, needless to say, uh, a lot of people came together uh, to support one another. Fortunately, we had a, a gas generator, so we had some electricity, just no hot water. <laughs> so I was kind of forced to take a few cold showers. In terms of just working, it was very challenging. Um, I have this battery backup for my phone, which I was actually able to you know, use uh, during the course of the power outage. You know, it's like they were saying on the news, we, the hurricane never actually hit land. It just kind of grazed our coast. So I can only imagine um, what would have happened if we had actually had a direct hit. Wind speeds up to 60, 70 miles per hour. And uh, in terms of working, it made it very challenging. But, you know, I'm a firm believer where, where there's a will, there's a way. And uh, even though I was without power, I was able to work with the exception of one day where I couldn't get online due to there being a lot of people in the network. Um, it's been frustrating, uh, but at the same time, um, I learned a lot you know, in terms of uh, doing what I can uh, with limited resources and making it happen. So do any of you have questions about hurricanes or what, what it's like to go through a hurricane? Well, I want to know. I I saw some photos that you you are sharing, and uh, I mean, there were trees pulled out of the ground and all kinds of stuff. Was that your backyard? Yeah, yeah. The the one photo that I shared was actually a picture of a sugar gum tree that's been in our backyard forever. It actually snapped the top of the tree off, and it landed pretty close to my house. Uh, fortunately, it didn't hit the house. But we actually had to get you know chainsaws out and you know cut you know cut the rest of the the limbs out and a um, lot of lot of trees down. Uh, but I'd say on our street alone there are probably twenty trees. Wow. So yeah, no. um, I, it, it's funny. I actually went into town. Uh, Jacksonville's a, a really large town area wide. It's actually the largest town or the largest city area wide in the United States. And I had to go into town for to run an errand, and I came back, and I commented to a family member, I was like, compared to the rest of the city, our section of town, which is called Mandarin, uh, it looked like a war zone. I mean, it just was so many trees down, so many leaves, so many just, you know, foliage that had uh, not made it. And um, even today, there's crews still out there. Comcast is still out there. AT&T, they're still... Uh, cleaning everything up from from Hurricane Matthew. So, but uh, I'd say probably one of the most important things is knowing uh, when to leave, when to stay. Now, I'm not so much near the beach. I'm probably a good 20, 25 minute drive away from the beach area. So that was one reason why I decided to stay. But definitely those folks uh, in zone, what they call zone A, which is right there at Jacksonville Beach. Uh, from the intercoastal towards the beach, those those folks stay evacuated just because it's just, just too dangerous to stay. Wow! But yeah, it, it was crazy <laughs> to say the least. No doubt. Um, I I've never been in a hurricane or hurricane force uh, wind, let alone no wind wind and rain. But I remember when uh, I was taking my daughter Gina to school. And she was about seven or eight, and uh, we were a little bit late for school because she had a doctor's appointment. So I'm, I'm getting taking her to school, and the winds are just serious for our area, Southern California. It was serious, and we had so much fun because I took her by the hand, and we were jogging towards the school building, and like for every step, we were going to step in a two thirds. You know, it was like it was blowing us along, and it was almost like flying. So here we were flying towards the building and we we're laughing and giggling. It was windy and fun and leaves are all over. And the sun was out and it was beautiful. But trying to get back to my car, it was like hard to breathe facing the wind. It was like fighting this breeze that was I was leaning 30% forward just to stand up and trying to get to my car. It was literally hard to breathe. So I can't imagine literally being in a hurricane that would be just something else um i've been through several hurricanes um i've lived here most of my life 
And all I can say is most of the time you can expect a lot of wind and a lot of rain. Uh, usually that's all we see. I mean, the last major hurricane to hit Jacksonville was uh, Hurricane Floyd. So it's been some time. But, uh, you know, it's just precaution, you know, making sure you've got your supplies, water, batteries, uh, food that's not going to spoil. Uh, I'd say that's one of the main things that happens is, you know, if your power goes out and you've got a refrigerator full of food, nine times out of ten, all that food, it, it goes bad. It's not good. So, and you wind up just throwing it away. Um, so, you know, just taking precaution, you know, making sure you've got medicine, uh, clothing, you know, supplies, um, definitely water, lots and lots and lots of water. Uh, usually one of the first things I do is if I hear there's a hurricane coming, I immediately go gas up, go gas up your vehicles, get extra gas if you've got a generator, you know, batteries, uh, flashlights, I mean, all the precautionary things just to make sure that uh, you, you have supplies. Now, uh, one of the last days that we were without power, the uh, Jacksonville Fire and Rescue actually came out to our neighborhood and started delivering um, ready-to-eat meals, like heat-up meals which I thought was really nice because a lot of folks, you know, they hadn't had a hot meal in literally a week. So wow. that was super nice. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh -huh. um, but yeah, it, it was, it was definitely interesting. Um, it, like I said, made it very challenging for me to work, but I did what, what, you know, what I could with what I had. That's all you can really do. So. so it sounds like it was more of an annoyance to you. It sounds like you're also an old hat at hurricane. So, because that's fine. But, I can um, relate, relate to what you're talking about too, Molly, because our hurricane season here is from June until November. And we actually all here, because the thing trouble here is we don't have the selection of stores and stuff. So the day before the hurricane, everything is cleaned out of the stores. <laughs> so we, actually maintain, <laughs> we actually maintain a cupboard of non-perishable goods that we actually stock in June and we don't touch it until until December. So preparation is, is the key and, and uh, never to, even if they say it's going to be a category one, prepare for a category four. Yeah. Oh, wow. Molly, did you have to board up your windows? Um, no, uh, I'm far enough inland to where uh, the windows, you know, I wasn't really concerned with them being boarded up, but a lot of the folks in zone A and B absolutely boarded up their windows because uh, this winds not only you know can affect your house, but I mean there's things debris flying around, you know trees, limbs, you know coconuts garbage. Are, coconuts are like cannonballs in a hurricane, <laughs> <laughs> and that's exactly. it's not funny. It's true. <laughs> so it, it's you know definitely one of those precautionary things that I mean if you're in you know one of the emergency zones like A or B or even C, definitely recommend. So. so you didn't have to do the sandbags. You didn't have to go get sandbags. No, no. I'm I'm further enough inland to where I uh, wasn't really affected. Now I do live about a mile away from the St. John's River. Um, so St. John's River is uh, one of two rivers that actually flows into the ocean. So it goes, it flows northwards. Um, so, but even then, you know, far enough you know, away where it wasn't really concerned. There wasn't really any flooding uh, at all where, I, where I'm located. Well, I'm really glad you survived no problem. And the, sorry you had the discomfort and the, the issues and stuff. But it's good to see you smiling and uh, at least uh, able to face the Saturday morning Marketing Smarty Show with a smile. So thank you very much for showing up. By the thank way, out of the, out of the content stream, we have uh, We Wake is speaking. And I wanted to bring up that we wake is relocating to India on huh? Monday. So you don't have to wait goodbye to him. He's going to be back online in you know, a few days getting situated and stuff. But if you don't hear from him as regularly as you do for a few days, that's the reason. He's going to be resituated in India. Where in um, India? Where in India? Bangalore. Bangalore. Oh, Bangalore. And, uh, and he also uh, happens. So we, we're not going to say goodbye. We're going to say we're just going to wave and say, have a good travels. And he'll be back soon. <laughs> but uh, he was making the comment, Unified Chat does not allow you to edit your comments. Grr. Don't be mm -hmm. mad. Just just fix it. 
we're, we're developing a system where you, we can edit your comments. So one of the things that Unified Chat does not allow us to do doesn't mean we have to live with it forever. We're actually going to move on to a system, hopefully in the near future, where we can edit comments. Now, where is it coming from? I don't know. So we'll talk about that more later. Uh, but anyway, uh, Molly, I want to move on to another subject, your your Google escapades. And by yes, the way, I, yes. I apologize retrospectively from calling, for calling you guys Google girls. I know that, uh, that that Karen has got a little bit of an issue with it, and you might, <laughs> <laughs> and you might also. But it's an affectionate term, and at 62 years old, I feel privileged to call you ladies, girls. But uh, my daughters are all in their 20s, and I can still call them girls too. So tough, okay? But anyway, uh, you 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 know what I mean when I when I address you ladies, and uh, it's not anything uh, negatory whatsoever. So. Anyway, but let's move on to the concept of the Google experience and tell us about your trip, what you, what you enjoyed. Sure. So um, recently I became a top contributor with Google in the Hangouts Help Forum. Um, the top contributor program is a program ran by Google for people who uh, regularly answer questions uh, in the different product forms. So there's several different forms. There's Hangouts, YouTube, Maps. Uh, search, AdSense, I mean, the list goes on and on. So pretty much every one of these help forums, uh, they have a community manager at Google. And their job is to monitor the activity in those forums. And if they see a person uh, really getting out there and helping other users by answering questions, uh, that person could potentially be promoted to what they call as a rising star. Um, from there, if that, if that person continues to be helpful and answer questions uh, pertaining to that product, uh, they may eventually become what they call as a top contributor. And top contributor program, um, for me, I've tried attaining that title for about three years now. So I was really super happy um, when I found out I was going to become a top contributor because to me, that is the ultimate thank you that you can get from Google uh, because the particular program, it runs, well, it runs year long, but every year they invite. Uh, the top contributors and rising stars to something called a meetup, which is what happened this year. So the meetup uh, is where an invitation is extended to uh, rising stars and top contributors, where Google actually flies you out. Uh, they pay the bill, they pay for your flight, they pay for your hotel, and when you show up, uh, it pretty much is a brainstorming session, a learning session. You get to meet other top contributors and rising stars. Um, it was really a great experience. I got to meet a few people in person that I've talked to online um, for the last few years. So uh, William Rock, Michael Daniels, just to name a few, I got to actually meet at the meetup. Um, in addition to the meetup, every other year, they have an event called the Summit. Uh, so it's the Top Contributor Summit. And it's my understanding, because I've never been to one yet, but it's my understanding that for the Top Contributor Summit, uh, it is just top contributors that are invited. And this, this is people from all over the world uh, that Google flies out to Google headquarters uh, in Mountain View, California. So um, primarily, uh, it was a really neat way to meet other top contributors and rising stars to collaborate with them. Uh, we learned a variety of different topics, uh, different subjects, and just more about the top contributor program in general. And, you know, just sharing information to other people that if you are interested in becoming a rising star or top contributor, you absolutely can do it. Just go to the hang or the help forums. Uh, if you're not sure where to find that, just go to Google and type Google help forums. Uh, it'll take you to the main page where you can, and you can participate in several different forms. You're not limited to just one. It just for me, Hangouts has been a product that I've always turned to. Um, I think I've shared with you guys before. Uh, the way I got turned on to Hangouts is in the uh, Google Partners community where I'm an ambassador. Uh, one of my requirements was I had to host a quarterly Hangout on air. And Google actually sent me this, a video kit. So it's a camera, microphone, all this lighting and things like that. And I had to actually learn how to host a Hangout on air. And then every quarter I would host 
Usually I talk about AdWords or analytics, um, you know, subjects that pertain to the Google Partners community. Um, but at one point I decided, hey, you know, I should probably, since I'm familiar with the product, go to the, the Hangout Help Forum and help other users uh, you know, uh, answer questions. So that was my experience. But uh, one of the neat things I thought was just actually getting to interact with Googlers, um, brainstorming with them. Uh, giving them feedback on different product improvements and ways to improve the program. Very cool. And that, yeah, thank you for that. Now, am I right? For for the most part, your event was covered with an NDA, or that is described as a non-disclosure agreement, where that, there's a lot that you can't talk about that that you that you discuss. I mean, it, it's questionable whether you can tell us much of anything. And, um, well, uh, that's correct. I, I uh, did sign an NDA, um, meaning I can't really discuss the particular certain subjects that were talked about. In fact, uh, the security there um, was so tight that when, uh, like, say, if you were on campus, we were in some, the section known as the quadrant or the quad. Um, so we were actually at the wellness center, and they had a special room for us to, to you know, to go over the particulars of the event. Um, but part of it was just, like I said, interacting with other people, being able to share information, brainstorming. Um, that for me was the most important part because it's always about trying to improve things, you know, and if you're able to network with other people, um, in person, you, there's a better collaborative, uh, atmosphere, if you will. And so it just is a better opportunity to brainstorm and share ideas and feedback with other people. Well, obviously Google recognizes your contribution, thinks very highly of them. And of course we do too, and you're very special to us. So we're very proud to say that you're part of the Smarty crew and part of this program and that you were able to participate in such a great event. So congratulations and welcome back. Now we're going to expect, we're going to expect more and more from Molly. <laughs> and we have a comment from the field. Let's see what William Rock says. The summit is rock star. I think you will enjoy it, Molly. Mo, oh, that's his name for you. Is that his name for you? Molly Cool Kid? I, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I, I think he was referring to the kit that Molly put up. Oh, Molly, comma, cool kid. Yeah, okay. that's that's it's me trying to combine the comments into one. <laughs> it's on how we interpret it. Okay, so we have the Google ladies here. Uh, we're going to move on to Karen. And I asked Karen, now you've had a couple of the events that you went to, but you did, you were, you were not under the same type of NDA, a non-disclosure agreement. So you took a shitload of photos and I, I really enjoyed going through them. But where would you like me to start, Karen? Well, first of all, uh, let, let's talk about the events themselves so people know what you attended in the two cases. And then we'll go into what, it, what, what they were. Yeah, it seems like I spent like a month at Google <laughs> when I think about it. Um, the first one was the Local Guide Summit uh, 2016 event. And it's the first ever um, similar to Molly, it's uh, for local guides. If you're if you're not familiar with it, it's the when you sign up on Google Maps, you can you know you basically write reviews, and so there's five levels, and level five folks have the opportunity to apply to attend um, a summit, and the summit this year uh, was in San Francisco and in Mountain View, and like Molly, it's all expense paid. Um, people came from all over the world. Um, there were people from Sri Lanka. There were people from, I met this man, um, his name was Charles. And he is from Reunion Island. And he is, uh, if you know where Reunion Island is at, it's actually a French state. And it is off of Madagascar. So you think of Africa, the continent, and then there's Madagascar, the island, and then there's Reunion Island. So this man traveled 22,000 miles to come to the summit, all expense paid. And they uh, Google pays for you know the visa, and they pay for your hotel, and they pay for your transportation, and you know all your meals. So 
people literally from the Czech Republic, um, Russia, um, all over Asia, uh, Latin America, Africa. So I met people from like Kenya and from South Africa, which you, you never in your life would ever get to meet any of these folks. At least I would never be able to meet any of these folks. And so it's interesting for, for me, we're meeting these local guides. We all had really kind of a common goal and a common interest that we all really want to help our communities and basically put businesses and places on the map and also write high quality reviews. So that was in itself a, an amazing event. Um, so it was for two days and one day we were in, um, at the Googleplex all day. And the second day we were at the San Francisco offices of Google. So like Molly, we had um, the Google, um, Googlers came in. Um, so one was Jen um, Fitzpatrick and she's the head of Google Maps. So she's the person who's responsible for Google Maps and also within that local guides. And so she kind of shared us with her vision and she's, she's been with Google, I think she said since like 1999. So she's got a very low number. And so she's like, a, I think she's like a vice president there and or, or executive vice president, some, some title, which is amazing when you think about kind of the birth of, of of Google and, and, and Google Maps and how we um, got to local guides. So uh, I have photos. I don't know if we have time to kind of go through them, um, Roland, because we did sign an NDA also, um, but we also signed an NDA where they took photos of us. So uh, you, if you are on Facebook or Twitter or um, G+, you, you're probably seeing a lot of local guide um, video that's coming through now um, because we're all part of that. Um, you know, uh, we're, they basically had a film, they had several film, film crews and photographers taking pictures of us. So uh, you, do you think that uh, it might be inappropriate to run through the bunch of the photos and uh, would you like to post your links to your collections? Yeah, I, don't, I mean, yeah, I don't know if we have enough time to go through the photos because... Um, we got know, some we, time, we, let's run through. Okay, so if you want to go through the ones from San Francisco first, then the last link I sent you. Yes. At last. A day at Googleplex? Yeah, why don't we do that? Okay, hang on one second. Go in there now. Yeah, so we and so we're going to share it to everybody. Yeah, so we we were we were staying at in San Francisco at the Hyatt Regency in Barcadero, and so we that was kind of where our our base camp was for for um, the seventy five local guides, and so we were basically I mean it was nonstop activity throughout the entire three days, four days that we were there. And so we were run pretty ragged in terms of just activities. And I was telling Molly, you got to wear really comfortable shoes. <laughs> and we were like driven on buses and what have you, but it was just like, go, 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 go. So if you want to take a look at that, Roland, I think you had it up. You have, well, Bill, you have Bill on, on camera. So you got to white box it. Well, I'm trying to white box what I'm sharing. Okay. So See what everyone's what, seeing. Yeah. So why don't you go back to the actual the text itself? The the what? The text, the copy, the album itself. Because you right now you had just have photos. Um, I'm not sure what you're asking me to do. Just go back to the actual. You had it right there. Okay, there you are. See. Okay. So can you go from the to start from the top? My buttons aren't working for me. Okay, here we go. So we were basically told to, to, to get up <laughs> and get ready by seven o'clock in the morning to drive to, San, to drive down to the Googleplex because the commute is uh, pretty bad in the Bay Area and uh, commute time. So it literally took us an hour and a half to get from San Francisco to Mountain View. And we were just kind of bumper to bumper. Um, as you kind of scroll down, Roland. My scrolling doesn't want to work. Okay. 
so we got everyone got backpacks and we've got t-shirts and you know of course our badges and water bottles um so we got uh, we got some some google swag and then this is where our agenda so we're literally we're starting at seven in the morning we didn't get back into the hotel until 10 at night so we were all day at the googleplex here are the buses So we finally get to, of course, the Googleplex. And of course, there's bicycles. I don't know, Molly, if you were able to like touch one, but they were not, they said that Googlers can only ride bicycles. And if you were a visitor, you could only, you could touch it, you could look like you're riding it, but you could not actually ride the bike. <laughs> yeah, they, they told us the same thing. They yeah. said you can take pictures of it, you can look at it, you can hold it, but you cannot ride it. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, for, for liability insurance reasons, so you cannot get off, you could not actually ride the bike, but the bikes are everywhere. So keep going, Roland. So this is kind of the room that we were in um, that was set up for us. And as you could tell, one thing I was really amazed by all of these uh, local guides is the kind of camera gear that these folks had. I'm only a person with an iPhone 6. And I also brought a, a Samsung that kind of died at the end. Um, but all these people had such gear. They had like 360s. They had, you know, they had these um, betas. They had just like selfie sticks. I mean, it was interesting watching um, a lot of these folks. Some of the local guides themselves are, are, are they're also part of the map maker program. So a lot of the um, developing countries out there, emerging markets, um, all they do is just make sure that, um, places or where they are at. And all they do is actually put places on the map. So they don't necessarily review per se, but they actually make sure that businesses and places are listed on Google Maps. So continue. Uh, so this lady here is a first person I actually got to meet. We, we've been kind of talking online um, via, via kind of texting each other, but we've actually never actually, actually talked to each other. But this is Julia Ross from um, Dallas. And these are Googlers. Uh, so that's Anouk and um, Gus. So uh, there's a, a team of, of, in terms of local guide team, I think there's about 20 of them all together. So this is Jen Fitz Fitzpatrick. And if you actually saw Business Insider or a lot of the different publications and also video, she was the one who basically kicked off the summit um, to kind of share her vision of Google Maps and how important local guides are. I didn't realize kind of sitting in the room listening to her how important we are because we're basically, she calls us, we're like, we're boots on the ground for for, for Google in terms of getting businesses on the map. There's only so much you can do with a, with a street view car but actually getting inside businesses, getting inside places and actually taking pictures of um, business hours, menus, um, you know, things that they can't do. They really appreciate because, as you know, Google is basically, you know, is all about data and having good quality data. Uh, the next lady as we're going through here is Mara. She's also she's in charge of the local guide team. So she's kind of giving us and we were she we were egging her and the team on because a lot of the local guide um, team members themselves are not level five. So there was kind of an ongoing joke that they were feeling kind of embarrassed because they're in a room of level fives and they were not even uh, some of them were not even close to that. So continue. So here's kind of the map of, of, of me, but behind it is all of the different people from all over the world who came to this event. So we had you know, one person from New Zealand, we had uh, uh, several people from Australia, you could tell, all over Asia, as I mentioned. We had people from coming from the Middle East. So I got to meet people from, um, Saudi Arabia, um, Egypt, which was really interesting because I, I was I'm a political science major, so being able to actually talk politics to someone who lives in that area and kind of their viewpoint was really an interesting experience for me. Just to kind of it to me, this whole experience was more like a United Nations of people all wanting to know, you know, a little bit of, about each other and you know, besides Google, but just how we all live. Right. So keep going. 
And here's a picture of, there were uh, basically four of us from San Francisco um, the, in terms of the local guy community got invited. So there's Libby, um, Ivan, and Kimberly. And here's again, many of the 360 photos. So I've never experienced 360 photography it, until um, basically uh, last month. So uh, I don't know if the audience knows anything about 360 photography, but it's actually pretty easy to take. And the, actually the technology, if you want to get one of these thetas, or what I've been told is about $200, $250 for a camera now. So it's really actually quite reasonable to do 360 photography. Wow. So is this one snap or is it yes. movement or what? Just one snap. Wow, that's very, very cool. Uh, yeah. three, 360 degree development photography as of a decade ago was taking snapshots in various segments and digitally stitching them all together so that you could do a, a rotating round robin of a room, but not all in one shot like this. This is really cool. Yeah, so this this is basically um, the 75 local guides plus also Googlers, because I, I see some Google, happy Googlers in the background. Um, but yeah, that's just one of the many, I mean, it, it's kind of interesting. After a while, you just get so used to being your photograph, your, your photo being taken um, throughout the, the time we were there. You just, I'm just used to having, it's kind of funny, it's kind of weird to sound, but yeah, you get used to having a camera crew, you know, recording you, photographing you, you know, interviewing you, like listening to you, it's just a, it's just a different kind of experience. So I, I kind of had like a at least now have a kind of a better understanding of what a celebrity must go through with a camera in your face all day long. Yeah. So what is this? Uh, one camera on a selfie stick held up above yeah. everybody's head. Yep. I see. Yeah. I can kind of see the stick there on the lower left quadrant. Yeah. And so you can you can basically do it yourself, Roland. <laughs> You don't have to move, you just have to hold the stick. <laughs> so here's another photo. Here, here are all of the um, local guides plus the uh, Googlers. Um, but so this is what 75 local guides look like. So how we got how we got here was you had to be level five, you had to submit a one minute uh, video um, as part of your application process. And what we were told that there were a thousand people who applied. So out of a thousand, you know, the here are the seventy-five um, that got that got accepted to come to the summit. Okay, so where are you? I am. Oh, okay. I am. See the lady that's with the purple hair. Uh. Oh yeah. Okay, I'm right next to her. So right there. Yeah. Can I see uh, her? I see. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so there, you, there she is, everybody. Yeah. Okay, so uh, we we've got a quarter of the hour to go. And I, I don't know how many more of these. We're about half, not quite halfway through the array. Is there anything you should, you think I should jump to that you don't want me to miss? I just kind of keep going now. We'll, we'll, we'll be a little faster. So this is the cafeteria. So I, I was telling William Rock about my experience at the cafeteria. Um, I'm a person who takes a while to make a decision when it comes to food. And there is just so much food in this cafeteria and so much selection. Oh, that well, it's that all stuff good. That's all for That's just my plate. And, right. and so they make everything there and it's all free. And um, the longest line there was the Indian food line, which I was told by the Indians there that the food was really good. So if you're an Indian, they actually approved of the, how good that line, that, the food was really good. So I had a little bit of, of I think I had an international plate. And then uh, here's us kind of walking through the campus and we were kind of heading towards the, the Google merchandise store. So if you do go to the Googleplex, you are allowed to go to the merchandise store um, that's open to the public. You cannot go to the Google Visitor Center unless you are invited by a Googler. Um, and there's, and you, of course you can't go into the cafeteria. Um, so if you know a Googler, uh, that's what my would be my suggestion is to try to get yourself invited onto the campus. Visitor can, center, no visitors allowed. Yeah, you have to be you have to be uh, you have to be uh, invited by a Googler. You just can't go in by yourself. But you can definitely. They just changed it recently for the merchandise store that you can go in even if you're not a Googler. You can shop, and the hours are I think like ten, ten to six thirty Monday through Friday. They don't open on the weekends. And apparently, so, if you've got little kids, you can buy the heck out of 
all these. Oh clothes. yeah, and so there's there's not a lot of merchandise in the store. You would think that there would be a lot, but it's very sparse, and um, and the prices are actually pretty pricey for this stuff. So this is not inexpensive Google merchandise. So you can dress your entire family. You can buy, um, you know, Google, Google paraphernalia for your desktop. You can buy uh, Google selfie sticks. Um, you know, there's water bottles, all kinds of stuff in the store. And then we were at next to this is another open area that you could go to is the Andrew Android statue garden. So they used to have all the statues kind of like up in front, but then they moved them all over into this area now. So all of these are of course the different Androids from the different projects that they worked uh, that have been worked on. So again, if you are a Google fan, there are a lot of statues out there to kind of choose from. You can see in the background behind me is the Kit Kat one, and this was the ice cream sandwich one, and this, of course, was the marshmallow. Um, the nougat is actually in front of um, the the building, which I, I didn't get a chance to do because like there was like 300 people trying to take a picture of the nougat. It was just like it was just it was too overwhelming for me. Oh. <laughs> Because you know, you by the time you get to, you have to keep moving, so it's just like it's just another time I'll get in front of nougat. So here is um, Kimberly, and we were on the bus waiting to get it taken back to um, the Google building that we were at. So the interesting thing uh, we were also told when we were at on the on the campus too is that if we had to go anywhere outside of the building that we were at, the room that we were at, we had to get a Googler to take us to. So you had to go to the restroom. You had to get a Googler to actually badge you in to use the restroom. Wow. That, so, that's true. Um, uh, there was actually one point where we had switched <laughs> campuses. We had just walked across to another campus. And uh, I was like, uh, before I do my thing, I need to take a pit stop. And literally, they, they, she literally stopped what she was doing and walked me to the building and badged me in. She stood, she stood and held my laptop <laughs> for me, which I thought was really nice. And then, you yeah, know, went back out and did our meeting. So. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, so it was kind of funny because even we were walking in, in the outside part of the campus, right? If there were porta potties out there, and, and, and nice porta potties, mind you, but if you even wanted to use a porta potty, they had to walk you to the porta potty. Yeah, and by the way, Bill has a comment from WeWake, <laughs> which is more appropriately assigned to when you were doing the products and things, but we may get to here. Yeah. But if not, we'll we'll show this anyway. He has the link to the Google Products Forum, and uh, if you want to copy that down, or uh, you know, you could actually uh, you could probably drop that in the in the uh, unified chat. Screen. That would help help too. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, oh, he did that. So if you want a, that link, just go to the unified chat comment stream, which is maintained and saved in archives. And you can always go back and review through and grab the link and go. And uh, Google is very strict about explicit and implicit NDAs. I'm sure they are. And uh, they, they got the millions of dollars to be able to support that too. So anyway, let's go back to the, uh, the photo tour that we're doing. Okay. And anything so here? Yeah, so um, there was also, so in the afternoon, we kind of broke off and we actually did some um, brainstorming and provided our opinions on um, product. And then also um, Googlers themselves, the product managers were telling us about um, what they were working on and what they could actually show show us. So that was kind of what the afternoon, but then we actually then had dinner out there. So we had an outdoor barbecue out there at, on the campus. And Googlers in general, what I've learned from a multiple Google events I've gone to is they know how to party. <laughs> it's like open bar. They had all kinds of, you know, drinks. If you're, if you're into wine and beer and, and mixed drinks and sodas. And, and, of course, there's always a craft table. You always can get your craft on going on at a Google event. So, um, you know, if you had the time, you could sit there and um, customize your little Android um, with markers. Um, there was Jenga. So I don't know if, if you're familiar with Jenga or not, but there is an outdoor Jenga version of it where people were playing with that. And that in itself was a lot of fun because you could see people were trying to figure out strategically what, um, you know, what, what a rectangle piece of wood to take out before it dropped. 
So um, that itself was uh, was quite a bit. They had there's also a little putting green out there that you don't see. Um, there's horseshoes. There's a whole bunch of uh, all these activities out there. So for if you're a Googler and you wanted to take a break from work, you can do all kinds of outdoor activities out there by yourself if you wanted to. And a tennis court. There was a tennis court out there too. So keep going, Roland. So this is like this is uh, again. I was talking about Charles. This is the guy that came from Reunion Island, and he was the one that literally traveled twenty-two thousand miles. So what does twenty-two thousand miles mean in terms of travel from where he is to you know to San Francisco? It took him thirty plus hours to get here. Wow. So think about the flight time there. Thirty okay, well, plus so hours. <laughs> Keeping in perspective, what is the width of the United States? Continental with United States. Isn't it a couple thousand miles? I think it's like, isn't it like, what, 2,500 miles? 25,000? 2,500, right? Something like that, right? Because it's 5,000 like like, 5, round trip to New York. So he, he came actually eight or nine times that distance. Yeah. Wow. And, and Reunion Island, this is the tip that he was telling me, there are 800,000 people living on this island. <laughs> <laughs> It's a wow. French. It's a French state, so it's not a. It's not a former colony. It's actually a. It's an existing French state. Mm -hmm. So there are people out there living. It's he says it's semi-tropical. Um, you know, it's beautiful in terms of photography. Um, you know all that. So here I wanted to meet. This is this is the kind of a side story I didn't talk about in in my photo album. Um, as I was walking across, because I had to use the restroom. <laughs> I asked these two ladies, could you badge me in? And one of them said to me, hey, are you Karen Chin? I said, yes. I said, you're the, you're the lady with the twins. I said, yes. She goes, I'm, you know, Sophie and I'm, you know, Carolina. Here, and I said, oh my God, you're the Google Plus Create team. So here are Googlers. These are the, if you're familiar with the Google Plus Create community, these are the two ladies who are in charge of that community. Okay. That's cool. awesome. Right. That's like, how random is that? Like, can you help me use the restroom? And then, of course, Google knows how to do some really good food. Like, I have had, I think I gained weight just by eating because there's just so much food. Um, I'm getting but, a half a pound just looking at this plate. <laughs> yeah. And the cool, and the interesting thing about it, too, is that they're very, uh, how would you say the word? They're very um, considerate of their of their employees of their guests because what they do is each of these items that were that were at the buffet it actually told what the ingredients was and if there was alcohol or no alcohol if there were nuts or no nuts or how this thing was made so if you had any dietary restrictions because there were some people from you know the middle east or from saudi arabia and they don't drink no alcohol even if it's sugar alcohol they won't touch it and so it was very considerate of them to actually have all these place cards, even in the cafeteria, what, ingredient, what the ingredients were and how something was made so that if you had any dietary restrictions, you knew whether you could touch it or not touch it. This photo is really funny. It's because uh, the gentleman on the left to me is from Cambodia and the other guy is from the Philippines and they both got these free Google jackets, which are really heavy, thick thermal ones, which you, when you think about, they live in a subtropical climate. They're never going to wear these jackets where they live, <laughs> but they were really happy when they got these jackets because they literally, after the, when the trip was over, Google basically gave them a visa till the end of the month. So for folks who came out here, if it made sense for them, they would, Google would pick up the tab and fly them back from whatever they were in within the United States, if it was within that same price range, and then fly them back home. So um, uh, Chaman from Cambodia, I think he ended up in the East Coast, the same with uh, Avil, and they both were in New York, and they've got flown back from New York back to, to the countries that they, that, they, that they come from. Wow, that's cool. So that's, I mean, to me, that's kind of, an, that's an awesome experience. This was fun because I don't know if you saw these, um, Molly, these big chairs. See the big, huge chairs around the campus? Yeah, they they had uh, not the big chairs on the campus I was at, but they did have those same chairs, uh, regular size um, with, you know, very, you know, Google colors and other various colors. Uh, we had a lot of balloons at our event. I don't know if you had balloons or not, but they had these Google balloons. Um, everywhere which was kind of cool yeah well we didn't have balloons we had more kind of i think the, the you see the, the google lights and the local guide stuff i mean it was more i think 
con more uh, there wasn't there, there were no balloons but we had a lot of aesthetics even even in the um, in the meeting rooms they had floral arrangements in the rooms it was really weird but they had floral arrangements I've never they, seen floral arrangements in meeting rooms before but they had floral arrangements for us yeah they had flowers on our buffet tables so yeah, yeah. so kind of that and then the last picture again here's happy people <laughs> Um, happy people from all over the world, again, uh, taking more pictures. And as you could tell, all these different people um, with their flags. So... Um, well, it looks like somebody thumbed you out of the picture there. No, I'm there. Where, whereabouts? I'm, okay, see the guy with the white, the kind of the gray beard short in the back? His little hand is above my face. I'm back left, there. right, center. So you see the lady with the red hair? Yeah. Okay, keep going back upward. So there's a guy with okay, right there. I'm right yeah, there. that's what I'm saying. He thumbed yeah. you out. Yeah. So I'm there. Okay, that's cool. So that was basically about the uh, that was the last of it. Yeah. Okay, so I'll quit sharing the uh, screen there, and um, a lot went on with Google Land, and you guys got to experience the heart of it. Let's see what comments coming from the field. This is a fascinating experience. There's no doubt uh, of being invited to be a part of this must be just really, really cool. And we're glad the two, the two of you got to experience some of it. We wake, we wake got to go to one in Britain too. So in our close field of associates that have been on this show and around this show, uh, we have three people in the uh, Google limelight that give us some pretty intense direct feedback as to what's going on. So one of the reasons I'm very confident in perpetuating this show, sticking with Hangouts, sticking with streaming media, mm -hmm. and relying on these things is we get firsthand feedback about what Google is doing. So I feel relatively secure, and I'm glad of that. So. The, the last question I would ask either of you ladies is this. From your experience there, what are you encouraged to talk about in the Smarty Show? And well, what should we consider as subjects for further discussion? Um, I'll go ahead and interject. Um, one announcement that came out this week was that uh, Google is now creating a mobile index for search. What that means is they are actually going to be focusing more on mobile searches and using that as the primary index versus the search that they currently have in place, which I thought was super fascinating because it just kind of plays into the fact mm -hmm. that Google is focused on mobile. Um, to me, that's pretty groundbreaking considering that the entire time that Google has been in existence, their search... <laughs> feature has been for desktop slash laptop computers and now that it's not going away. I mean certainly it's not going away, but it it's no longer going to be the primary index. They're going to have a mobile primary index, which I think is super fascinating. Um, another thing is wait the a uh, wait, wait a minute. How are they okay. going to implement that? So when you're on a mobile phone, it's going to be yeah. all the index delivers. And then if you're not on a mobile phone, they're going to deliver from a different index or how Correct. do they so Correct. It's all that, that's exactly it. on the device. It's all based on the device. Correct. So I, they I see just some, announced that a couple of days ago. I see some potential problems with that. I mean if depending upon whether you're on your phone or you're on your computer, if you don't get the same results, how do you, are you sure that you're getting a complete search? Well, I think their focus on that is they're trying to get more people to use mobile devices versus a desktop or a laptop device. I mean, that's my guess. It's such a brand new topic of conversation. Um, like I said, they just announced it. They're going to be implementing it months from now. So I don't even know exactly when they're going to implement it. But I think it goes back into their theme of mobile and artificial intelligence and the fact that they are very serious about mobile usage and about mm -hmm. you know, searches, applications, and that they're really focused on mobile as a, a, a concept that they're moving forward with. So 
So, so my uh, question, so so my question, leave leave it to Roland to ask the the question, uh, is whether or not Google's intention is actually to move people away from computers and towards mobile, or are they just accommodating the trend that be? In other words, I we know that more people are moving towards mobile because it makes sense. More people can afford a phone than they can afford a computer. More people are mobile. They're using it on the go. So it's convenient in a lot of cases. But is Google actually moving people towards phones and away from computers or not? I don't think that's necessarily what they're trying to do. I think they're trying to make the searches that people are doing for mobile devices more relevant. Um, because of the fact that over the last couple of years, trends have indicated that more and more people are using a mobile phone to do searches, um, especially you know local searches like near me, around me, by me, you know local store. They're trying to take that concept and make it more specialized to where it's delivering more relative search results. So it sounds like they're trying to accommodate more than they are trying to dominate. I see it differently, I think, because I I was with people from overseas that people overseas, they only their only device is their phone. And we had conversations about people literally do their work on their phone, which I, I, I have a hard time doing with the, you know, typing. But people are literally overseas, especially in Asia, they're doing everything related to that phone and with the technology and now with the pixel that just came out and with, you know, uh, Google assistant, which is that whole AI technology that's here now. Um, it's made by Google. Um, we're Google's making it easier for people to live their lifestyle. So they're not tittered, you know, to a computer, you know, to their desktop. They're, they're basically, it's for, it's, you can, you're going to eventually it's going to be basically you're going to have a chip on you that's what it's going to end up being and you can basically do a search probably by thinking about it and somehow the information is going to be there um i don't know how that's going to work but you're getting to that with that whole artificial intelligence and what i've seen and what they talked about it's completely fathomable maybe not this year maybe not next year but maybe in the next 10 years We'll have that, and and you you're not necessarily going to be because you've got the tablets, you've got the phones. You don't necessarily have to be on a desktop. So I totally what? agree with you, and, and let me interject what Karen was talking about about working from your mobile phone. So I agree with you 100. percent The concept of me working from my phone, I was like, there's no way, there's no way I can work from my phone. And about Eight months ago, I thought, you know, why don't I give it a try just to see could I work from my phone? I'm like, well, yeah, I can answer emails. I can answer texts. I can answer phone calls. I can get on Google Drive. I can type a Google Doc. I can type in a Google Sheet or a slide. Um, I could do a Hangout from my phone. I mean, literally all the different products that I'm using on my desktop, I could do from my phone. The only thing I could say I, I couldn't really do was any design work, like graphic design or website design, because you have to have software to do that, and the software is not on my phone. But I mean, just regular day-to-day things, you know, running your business, absolutely. And I've actually been doing that for about six months. In fact, when I was out there, when we had some downtime, what was I doing? Checking my email, returning phone calls. I actually had a couple of clients call me while I was out there. You know, never call me, but you know, I'm at Google. <laughs> they decide, I gotta call Molly. So here's one thing I haven't tried. Let me cut in there. A hangout on air from my phone. It's possible. You can do a hangout on possible. air. Yeah. Oh, uh, I haven't Absolutely. tried that. Yet. So I would like some feedback from the field of anyone that's tried you running a hangout on air from their smartphone. And by the way, we've got a comment from the field that we want to present. Molly, based on what you know, where are advertisers planning their money? More mobile or PC indexing? Um, I would definitely say more mobile, um, Mm -hmm. just because of the fact that more and more people, um, before they even go to a store, they're doing a search from their mobile device. And uh, Google's actually working on several different technologies. Uh, One's called placement pins. Um, these are going to be actual advertisements that show up on Google Maps. So say, for instance, you're doing a search to go to a, a location. 
and you happen to listen and just use Starbucks as an example, there's a Starbucks near the location. Well, if you go do a search on the Google Maps, a Ken placement would be, hey, if you stop by Starbucks, we'll give you $2 off a, a, a coffee. So I think that indicates right there that their, their focus is more and more on mobile marketing. In fact, I tell people all the time that's one reason why video is going to be the wave of the future because it's a lot easier to click a play button from your mobile phone than to sit and you know read through paragraph after paragraph after paragraph. And so um, you know, certainly things like pay-per-click, that's always going to be around. Um, you know, local results, that's always going to be around. Organic, that's going to be around. But I think as uh, search becomes more localized to mobile devices, you're going to see more and more opportunities for advertising on mobile devices. Real good. Let's see what the follow-up is here. WeWake says the search results on mobiles have been different from what you get on desktop since a long time. On mobile, it takes a lot of input in terms of where you are, in terms of GPS coordinates, etc. Local guides information comes into play. Okay, so that's, that's good feedback. And I was noticing uh, one other thing from the field that Deborah Burden says, I have done one on air, but it is easier to drop and lose posting. Needs more work. Now, uh, I want to make sure that we know uh, Deborah Burton, are we talking about a hangout or a hangout on air? In other words, was it recorded and, and shifted to YouTube, recorded and archived in YouTube? That's a hangout on air. And uh, a hangout, I know we can do a hangout from via the phone. We can participate in hangouts. We've had Molly come in from thousands of miles away on her mobile phone. But what about hangouts on air, the recorded version that goes up to YouTube? One more comment from Bill. Michael Daniels said, you cannot do a Hangout on Air anymore from your device since they moved to YouTube only. I have tried many, many times. Thank you, Michael. I thought that was the case. And I, coming from you, I'm sure that's correct. So Deborah, that must have been a Hangout, not a Hangout on Air, or it must have been prior to September 18th or it was September 12th. So, um, uh, WeWake says, Roland, one can do a YouTube live from mobile. Now, um, we have conflicting stories, so I, uh, I would like to uh, put this out to the people that we, need to re that we need to clarify and rectify the question as to whether Hangouts on Air can literally be done, conducted, maybe set up and executed and completely... Uh, maintained from a cell phone because that's beyond my experience. Of course, I've never had the instinct to do it, and I don't have the need to do it. But somebody out there is going to. So let's find out whether we can or not. And our time is way up. We have a, a, a habit of going overtime at the Smarty Show. Do we have any kind of a wrap-up that we need to do, uh, Bill or anybody? Or Karen or, Mo or Molly? Anyone have a last-minute thing that they want to add to the show? Um, I was just thinking that if you want to continue, we could continue next week um, for the, the second part for the October 4th Google Harbor. Launch. Sounds good to me. So we could talk kind of talk. I think that would also gear to then talking about the different products that Google is launching and just all the good news that's happening with Google in terms of the different. Um, it seems like it's, it's like product launch season for them. So there's all these new features and things that are happening that we could kind of talk Absolutely. about. Absolutely. Absolutely. That was one of the things that I was hoping we get to today. makes a lot of sense to just pick up where we left off and have a tool of Google products next week. So um, I guess I'm going to wrap it up unless anyone has anything else to, to uh, interject. I would just quickly add, just really super quick, that all these products that we're talking about, make sure and check out the, the uh, help forms. If you ever have any questions, look for, uh, just post it in, in there and uh, look for an answer. And if you don't get an answer, just ask it again. There are people uh, in this form dedicated to answering your questions. Yes, that's one of the things that Michael Daniels and Andrew Hatchett from the user to user live community, definitely both uh, support and promote heavily is to use the feedback systems that are based 
that are put in place and the health forums to collect information and to contribute information to, uh, to continue to contribute to and build those communities. So we, we also suggest helping there. So, um, you know, I'd like to just submit one more comment um, that you could yeah. bring up there that was to Karen from Deborah. I agree with Karen's explanation on the switch, switching people who are going, I'm not exactly uh, following this conversation here. Uh, on the switch, people are going and Google's motive. As we learn more how to use the phone, we find it much more convenient to use. I use a tablet for work with clients in the field. Oh, there's no doubt these devices, both phone and tablets and various devices, are becoming more and more business friendly and supportive. And uh, we talked about that using um, Google Duo, be it to be able to talk to a client or your boss or whoever, and to show them with your camera an exact problem in the field, report back various things. And I know that this is technology that's going to help everybody. And in so many ways, we're going to find practical uses for today's technology. So with that, we're going to wrap things up. Thank you very much, Bill, for coordinating some of the conversations in the field. Thank you, Karen, for your feedback on, on the Google event. And we'll look forward to the, the next episode when we talk about products. And thank you very much, Molly, for reporting on your experiences and for updating us on the uh, aftermath of the hurricane. <laughs> so listen, everybody, thank you very much for tuning in on Saturday Morning Marketing Smarties. Marketing Smarties Show appreciates your participation. All of you people out there in the audience, thank you very much. Good day. We'll see you.